Hey guys, welcome to my video on paste zero and dynamic naming in a loop. Here's the gist of what I want us to get to today. Uh, you know when you run a loop and you do a new calculation or create a new graph or some sort of new thing with each iteration? Well, I want you to be able to save those. So you run a loop and it creates a whole bunch of different objects, each with their own name. So we're going to do a very simple version of this. But first, I need to introduce you to the paste zero function and the assign function. And then we'll do a version where we look at a data set. And I'm going to do something simple like uh, saving the sum of people with different hair color in this hair color data set. Right? Uh, so let's think about text real quick. Before we get to the hair stuff, let's think about the number pi. Pi is 3.14159-ish. Right? That's just a little string. And if I print it, it's just a little string. Now, what if I want to, instead of having this number hard coded, what if I want to use a variable that I previously defined? For instance, let's do that one. Okay, x is pi. Um, can I say pi is x? Sure, but it doesn't give me the number, it just says x. That just thinks that x is the, no, the letter x. Well, what if I say pi is x? No. What if I say pi is and then add x to it? Still no. Nope. We need paste zero. And the way paste zero works is you get to piece together as many pieces as you want to, where it can alternate or however you want to, of stuff you're writing out and items from your code. So for instance, I can say pi is and leave that in quotes because that's not changing. But and then I can insert my variable x. So if it's something I just want to write out like a sentence, I put it in quotes. And then I separate it with a comma from something that is just a variable from in my script. Pi is blah, blah, blah. All right, two things I'm going to do here. One is I'm annoying and it's going to bother me that there's no space there. That's an easy fix. You just put a space in the text. Yay. Other thing, maybe I don't want all those decimal places. And so I'm going to use this as a chance to tell you that you can also do mathematical operations in here or just any function in general. For instance, I can round x to the second place. Okay, I don't just have to have my variable there. I can do stuff to the variable and it's going to come out. Now I can do more. I can say, let's make this proper English and give it a period. Or not, let's say, and pi squared is, what should I do? Let's try x to the 2. Right. Okay, something like that. What's it do? Pi is 3.14 and pi squared is that thing. And if I want to round that too, I can. That's not really the focus of this video, so let's not waste too much time there. The gist of it though is I can switch back and forth between code stuff, which doesn't get quotes, and text stuff, which does. I can do as much of it as I want to. Paste zero lets me just write out however I want to do it. Next is the assign function. And the assign function works like this. I have a label, which uh, is the thing I'm creating. And then I'm going to assign it a value. So for instance, I can say stuff, I don't know. Let's call this pi squared. And I want to assign it a value, like x squared, for instance. And let's see. Hey, look at that. There it is. Okay. All you need is something in quotes there to give it a name. That's the name of the object you're creating, and then a value for the object there. Now, I can get fancy. 
I can put paste zeros inside this first before the first comma. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to literally because this particular one wouldn't make sense, but I'll show you just for fun. Uh, what if I put this entire paste zero statement in there? Well, that's just going to create an object called pi is 3.14 and pi squared is 9.87. That's the name of that object. And what value does it have? It's still just pi squared because it's still just x squared in the value part. Right. Okay, so let's combine this stuff. And let's do some stuff with the hair eye color data set. Now, where did I get this data set? It's in the data sets library. Okay, uh, so first thing I'm noticing is that this is storing as a table, which is gonna mess us up. Uh, I'm gonna put it in a data frame format so we can do some of our easy base R manipulations that everyone kind of learns early on. Okay, so here's the heck data table, 32 observations. And what it does is it says the number of students, frequency, who are a certain sex, eye color, hair color. So there are 32 male students with brown eyes and black hair in this data set. 53 male, brown, brown, and so on. So I'm going to find the number of students with each hair color. And I could use Deplier, I could use SQLDF, I could use a whole host of data wrangling tools. I'm not gonna, this is a video on using paste zero in a for loop. So maybe this isn't the ultimate example of when you should use paste zero in a for loop, but that's okay. Uh, so let's practice real quick. Let's add up the number of students with black hair. So some heck data but only a subset of heck data, so I get my square brackets. Now, which rows? I want the rows where heck data dollar sign hair is equal to black. And which columns am I subbing? Am I, am I summing? Frequency, that's the number of students in each. So this should sum all the frequencies where the hair is black. Let's see what happens. 108. Is that right? So let's add them up. 32, 43, 53, 56, 62, 92, 101, 106, 108. Sweet. It's right. There are, 50, there are 108 students with black hair. So I want to do something like this. I'm going to feed it through a loop where I change the hair color with each iteration. So first, let's just practice printing a sentence that says there are blah students with black hair uh, or with whatever their hair color is. And then we'll work up having it assign values and actually saving that information. So let's do a simple version first where we just printed. So let's say for I in uh, meek heck data dollar sign hair, right? Uh, yeah, that should give me, let's see what those equal. Okay, just that bit is black, brown, red, blonde. So I is gonna cycle through, first I'll be black, then it'll be brown, then it'll be red, then it'll be blonde. Okay, so there's that. And let's just do the paste zero first. Actually, let's do the sum for each. Some color is equal to, and we'll borrow this statement and just make a quick minor change to it. The sum color, instead of hair being equal to black, hair is just gonna equal I. And let's print some color and see what happens. See if we're on the right track. Well, I'm gonna let you verify that on your own, but those are the numbers it should be coming up with. But for the most part, that doesn't actually tell me much. I want it to be associated with the actual hair colors. So instead of just some color, let's do a paste to zero. And we can leave some color there. Let's say blah. 
students have, and what color hair? I hair. Okay, so let's, let's see if you can figure out what this is gonna be telling me. I am printing out a statement that says this number, 108, 286, 71, 127, students have hair color hair. All right, so let's check this statement real quick. 127 students have blonde hair being one version of it. And let's print that. Let's say for I in each of those hair colors, blam. 108 students have black hair, 286 students have brown hair, 71 students have red hair, 127 students have blonde hair. Booyah. Okay, so we got that. That's the hard part. Okay, we've fed our calculation through the loop, and we have associated the calculation number with the iteration itself. Now, I could do something different, like I could actually save an item. What if I want to call something like the color count, like the hair color count? Uh, let's do assign and paste zero. And let's do I count. Okay, so this thing is called I count, which will look something like this. Like blonde count, black count, red count, brown count. And what value am I going to give it? The thing we calculated some color now before i run this code for the last time i want you to watch the environment over here because a bunch of new stuff's about to get added to it stuff that i can use later ready hey check it out black count is now an object that i can use in my code so is blonde count brown count and red count All right so i use this assign function and this paste function to create objects with dynamically named labels that match the iterations of the loop. So I hope that's helpful to you, you guys. Um, if not, too bad. This can be expanded. It can get really big. You can print different data sets. You can make it, you can, if you do it right, you can have different graphs print based on different loop parameters. You can change the labels of those graphs and then save them, each with their own names. You can do kind of cool stuff. Um, so play around with it. Hope it's useful. Good luck. Have fun. Make good choices.